Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, greetings to all of you who are gathered in here this morning. I do greet you with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll firstly like to welcome all of you, especially those who have traveled from afar. We appreciate your effort. You have made it here, all of you, to this historic event that we are to observe today for the consecration of our Bishop-elect, Father Smart. It has been a long-awaited day, so we really welcome you. There are some highlights I want you to to put across to you. 
We have our toilets just next to, next to, just on the other side of the kitchen there. The male restrooms as well as the ladies' restrooms. Please let us make sure that our toilets are clean. Let us also make sure that this venue is clean. If you have any tissue, paper, that you are using, put it back in your, in your handbag. Lunch will be served from the area behind the church after the service. Please make sure that we keep everything clean as possible because today in the evening there will be a service for the Methodist Church and they will also be having another service tomorrow. Let me also acknowledge the presence of our pre-mate, Archbishop Shane Johnson, who has just traveled from Canada. He will be our celebrant today and a preacher today. He will also be a chief, chief consecrator and it is for the very first time that he visits South Africa. He's the man at the top of the TAC. Let's give, give a round of applause for him. We are also honored to have Bishop Craig Botherell with us again this year. Remember he was there during the consecration of uh, Bishop Murinda. He was here again in 2022, and he has visited that, uh, us again this year. He's a true friend of our Southern African diocese. We have again Bishop Murinda seated on that side. He has traveled from Zimbabwe to be here. Honorable Bishop. You are welcome here. We also do welcome the family of Bishop elect Father Stevens Smart from Cape Town. We are honored to be having them here with us today. Can they just stand up for us to see them? Thank you. We thank the leadership of this church, the Westview Methodist Church, for allowing us to use this facility. It is not for the, very first, for the first time that we use this facility, so we really like to thank them. Uh, with regard to the Holy Communion, we will be doing it a different way, just like uh, when we did uh, during the COVID-19. We will be dipping instead of drinking from the chalice. After you have received the wafer, the blessed sacrament of the body of Christ, you will be moving to the deacon standing next to the priest who will be holding a chalice, and then you dip your wafer and return to your, to your seat. I just want to say once more, you are welcome to this joyous day today for Father, Father, Father Smart Stevens. Thank you very much. We are about to start with our service. Good morning to all of you. Yeah, mine is going to be a very simple announcement. Uh, I will I'll be doing the uh, conducting of the hymns, right? 
we follow the hymns as we have them in the uh, uh, leaflets, right? And uh, we can try, we'll try as much as to uh, have them in that, part, in that particular order, right? Uh, every time when we sing, we stand up and let's use our voices. I think God gave us these voices. Let's use them today. It's a very, very, very important and monumental day for us in the history of our church. Thank you very much. My name is Mkholi Zibambo. I'm sure you all know me. I've been with you for some time in as far as music is, con is concerned. I, th I hope I, I chose the good songs and I hope you love them. Okay, thank you.
Peace be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who by thy Son, Jesus Christ, did give to thy holy apostles many excellent gifts, and they charge them to feed thy flock. Give grace, we beseech thee, to all bishops, the pastors of thy church, that they may diligently preach thy word and duly administer the godly discipline thereof, and grant to all thy people that they may obediently follow the saying, that all may reserve the crown, receive the crown of everlasting glory, through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. Amen. Let us sit for the epistle. The epistle is written in the epistle to Timothy, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not as a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well in his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how, how shall he take care of the church of God? not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them that are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Here endeth the epistle. We'll be standing for the Holy Gospel. That will be read by Bishop Craig Hothra. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel is written in the 28th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 18th verse. Glory, Glory be to thee, thee, O Lord. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing the creed. C'est toi la version. Tu mets là.
thank you. Let us sit. We are going to sing as a hymn before. Before the sermon? Yes. Before the sermon, we'll sing a, a, a hymn. sermon by the most reverend Shane B. Junction, primate of the traditional Indian church. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. My brother bishops, reverend fathers, beloved brethren in Christ, I bring you greetings on behalf of the traditional Anglican Church throughout the world, and in particular to my, from my homeland and home diocese of Canada. We have been praying for Bishop-elect Stephen, for all of you here for some time, and I am very grateful to Almighty God that I was able to come here with my brother bishop Botterill from Canada to be here and celebrate this wonderful and holy mystery, the consecration of a new bishop. And so we gather together here in this church, this place of worship, to consecrate a man to be a bishop in the church of God. We gather to celebrate the calling and election to the Episcopus of our brother in Christ, Father Stephen. He will serve for the whole church. He will proclaim the saving gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. But the particular mission, his particular mission, his particular focus will be as Bishop Coadjutor within the Diocese of Pretoria and Southern Africa of the traditional Anglican Church. To be called and consecrated a bishop in Christ, one holy Catholic and apostolic church, is a, is a daunting mission, one for which we are not worthy 
who hold this office, nor are we necessarily equipped unless we have Christ in our heart and the Holy Spirit in our soul. If we are to understand the role and responsibilities of a bishop in the Church of God, then we must first turn to Holy Scripture, the divine Word of God. What kind of man, then, should be a bishop? St. Paul, while in prison, wrote to Timothy, in which he said that a bishop must be beyond reproach. St. James, in his epistle, wrote, Lay aside all filthiness and residue of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. St. Paul goes on to state that God's gifts uh, to a bishop must be rekindled, that a bishop must use all the spiritual gifts that the Lord has given to him through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit so as to build up the church and to build that church in love. One of the most important spiritual gifts of a bishop is the gift of apostleship, the, gi the gift for the concern of the whole church. A bishop's flock cannot simply be a single congregation. The bishop is the pastor within the entire diocese and into the larger world. He is to be, use he is to be using an ancient term within the church, the servant's of the servants of God. As a bishop, Father Smuts is called to serve his superior, Archbishop Michael Gill, and to serve all the clergy and people who will look to him for leadership, spiritual guidance, and sacramental ministry, service, mission, blessing, and prayer. St. Paul writes that a bishop must be strong in his proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. As bishops, clergy, and laity, we cannot be fearful, particularly in our world today, to be called a Christian. We cannot be afraid to be known as people of faith, the people of God, the redeemed of Christ. A bishop must be constant in his proclamation of Christ's message of salvation in every aspect, in every word, in every deed and motivation, in season and out of season. And if a bishop is to, be, is to fulfill this calling, then he must know the God revealed by Jesus Christ and proclaimed by his church. The bishop is the chief testifier of the Lord. He must be prepared to proclaim the truth of God in Jesus Christ without fear, hesitation, or doubt. In Holy Scripture, we read the Apostle Paul exhorting Timothy, the young bishop of Ephesus, to follow and to guard the true faith that has been entrusted to him. In our world, we see too many Christian churches and pastors who have deviated from the faith once delivered to the saints, who have turned away from the gospel to make it relevant, to make it socially acceptable, and so to undo the precepts of Christ's holy word. We have to be careful that we do not become cultural Christians. That is not the way of Christ. It must not be the way of his church and certainly not that of his ministers. One of the questions asked of a bishop at his consecration is, are you ready with all faithful diligence to banish and drive away from the church all erroneous and strange doctrine contrary to God's word? and both privately and openly to call upon and encourage others to do the same. 
Again, St. Paul writes, follow the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard the truth that has been entrusted to you by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Finally, a bishop must be absolutely convinced, absolutely convinced that he is being called by the Holy Spirit to this ministry and office. It is God who calls the man. It is the church who confirms that call in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are here today. We are gathered. The bishop co-consecrators of Christ one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We will shortly lay hands upon Father Stephen, affirming his call in God empowering him by the sanctification of the Holy Spirit to fulfill that calling and to do all in his power by the grace of God to fulfill the office and work of a bishop in the church of God. Father Stephen, please stand. My dear brother in Christ, I have not known you long, but I have prayed for you. In the words of the Holy Apostle, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, and do all in love and in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is himself the shepherd and bishop of our souls. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.
We move to the right, of course, the traditional Anglican Church, mandate for Episcopal con consecration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen. To the faithful in Jesus Christ throughout the whole world, greetings. Be it known to all to whom this diocese presents shall come that we, the most reverend Shane B. Johnson, by divine permission, primate of traditional Anglican Church, having received the notice that the very reverend Stephen Smarts has been duly and legitim legitimately elected bishop, Kojuta, of the Diocese of Pretoria and Southern Africa in the traditional Anglican Church, province of Africa, in accordance with the constitution and canons of that church. The set election, having been ratified by the majority of the College of Bishops of the traditional Anglican Church. And after due reflection and prayer and humble obedience to the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, we have determined in accordance with the ancient traditions of Catholic faith and practice that to meet the needs of the Diocese of Pretoria and Southern Africa, it is necessary to raise to the sacred order of bishops in the Church of God, our well-beloved priest and brother, the very reverend Father Stephen Smarts. Now, therefore, we do authorize the most reverend Michael Gill, Metropolitan Archbishop of the province of Africa, and the Bishop Ordinary of the Diocese of Pretoria and Southern Africa, in our presence as principal consecrator, together with two other bishops appointed by him, to concentrate, consecrate the very Reverend Stephen Smarts to the Episcopate. This apostolic mandate is issued under the authority of the College of Bishops of the traditional Anglican Church. In witness whereof, we have affixed our primatial hand and seal given this seventh day of March in the year of our Lord 2020 for and of our primacy the seventh. I thank you. Reverend Father in God, we present unto you this godly and well learned man to be ordained and consecrated bishop. We move to a promise of confirmity. In the name of God, Amen. Amen. I, Stephen Smuts, chosen to be Bishop Coadjutor of the traditional Anglican Church, Diocese of Pretoria and Southern Africa, we promise conformity and obedience to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the traditional Anglican Church. So help me God, through Jesus Christ. Brethren, it is written in the Gospel of St. Luke that our Savior Christ continued the whole night in prayer before he chose and sent forth his twelve apostles. It is written also 
that the holy apostles prayed before they ordained Matthias to be a number of the twelve. Let us, therefore, following the example of our Savior Christ and his apostles, offer up our prayers to Almighty God before we admit and send forth this person presented unto us to the work whereunto we trust the Holy Ghost hath called us. God the Father, have mercy upon us. O God the Son, have mercy upon us. O God the Holy Ghost, have mercy upon us. O Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant peace to the whole world and to thy church. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to sanctify and bless thy holy church throughout the world. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to inspire all bishops, priests, and deacons with the love of thee and of thy church. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to endue all ministers of thy church with devotion to thy glory and to the salvation of souls. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bless this, our brother Stephen, and to send thy grace upon him, that he may duly exercise the office whereunto he has been called to the edifying of thy church and to the honor, praise, and glory of thy holy name. Lord, that it may please thee to guide by thy indwelling spirit those whom thou dost call to the ministry of thy church, that they may go forward with courage and persevere to the end. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to increase the number of the ministers of thy church, that the gospel may be preached to all people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to hasten the fulfillment of thy purpose that thy church may be one. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant that we, with all thy saints, may be partakers of thine everlasting kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Morena re
Hearken unto our voice, O Lord, when we cry unto thee. O Lord, arise, help us. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God, who dost ever hallow and protect thy church, raise up therein through thy spirit good and faithful stewards of the mysteries of Christ, that by their ministry and example thy people may abide in thy favor and be guided in the way of truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same spirit, ever one God, world without end. Almighty God, giver of all good things, who by thy Holy Spirit has appointed diverse orders of ministers in thy church, mercifully behold this thy servant Stephen, now called to the work and ministry of a bishop, and so replenish him with the truth of thy doctrine and adorn him with innocency of life, that both by word and deed he may faithfully serve thee in this office to the glory of thy name and the edifying and well-governing of thy church, through the merits of our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Brother Stephen, for as much as the Holy Scripture and the ancient canons command that we should not be hasty in laying on of hands and admitting any person to government in the Church of Christ, which he hath purchased with no less price than the effusion of his own blood, before we admit you to this administration, we will examine you in certain articles to the end that the congregation present may have a trial and bear witness how you are minded to behave yourself in the church of God. Are you persuaded that you are truly called to this ministration according to the will of our Lord Jesus Christ and the order of this church? I am so persuaded. Are you persuaded that the Holy Scriptures contain all doctrine required as necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? And are you determined out of the same Holy Scriptures to instruct the people committed to your charge and to teach or maintain nothing as necessary to eternal salvation, but that which you shall be persuaded may be concluded and proved by the same? I am so persuaded and determined Will you then faithfully exercise yourself in the Holy Scriptures and call upon God by prayer for the true understanding of the same, so that you may be able by them to teach and exhort with wholesome doctrine and to withstand and convince, convince the gainsayers? I will so do by the help of God. Are you ready with all faithful diligence to banish and drive away from the church all erroneous and strange doctrine contrary to God's word, and both privately and openly to call upon and encourage others to the same. I am ready, the Lord being my helper. Will you deny all ungodliness and worldly lusts, and live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, that you may show yourself in all things an example of good works unto others, that the adversary may be ashamed, 
having nothing to say against you. I will so do, the Lord being my helper. Will you maintain and set forward as much as shall lie in you, quietness, love, and peace among all men, and diligently exercise discipline as by the authority of God's word and by the order of this church is committed to you. I will so do by the help of God. Will you be faithful in ordaining, sending, or laying hands upon others? I will so be by the help of God. Will you show yourself gentle and be merciful for Christ's sake to poor and needy people and to all strangers destitute of help? I will so show myself by God's help. Please let us know. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who hath given you a good will to do all these things, grant also unto you strength and power to perform the same, that he accomplishing in you the good work which he hath begun, you may be found perfect and irreprehensible at the latter day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God and most merciful Father, who of thine infinite goodness has given thine only Son and dear beloved Jesus Christ to be our Redeemer and the author of everlasting life, who after that he had made perfect our redemption by his death and was ascended into heaven, bore down his gifts abundantly upon men, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and doctors to the edifying and making perfect his church. Grant, we beseech thee, to this thy servant Stephen, such grace that he may evermore be ready to spread abroad thy gospel, the glad tidings of reconciliation with thee, and use the authority given him 
not to destruction, but to salvation, not to hurt, but to help, so that as a wise and faithful servant, giving to thy family their portion in due season, he may at last be received into everlasting joy through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. Receive the Holy Ghost for the office and work of a bishop in the Church of God, now committed unto thee by the imposition of our hands. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And remember that thou stir up the grace of God which is given thee by the imposition of our hands. For God hath not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power, and love, and soberness. Amen. Exercise without reproach thy holy priesthood. Remember thy charge as steward of God and the ambassador of Christ. Sanctify the faithful, proclaim the gospel, make full proof of thy ministry. Amen. Uh, receive this ring, the seal of fidelity. Guard well and maintain the faith. Protect the bride of Christ, his holy church. Archbishop Shane is changing his stole to be from being a crossed stole like the priests wear to being the straight stole of the bishop. He's receiving his cross with the lanyard.
to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. Think upon the things contained in this book. Be diligent in them, that the increase coming thereby may be manifest to all men. For by so doing thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Be to the flock of Christ a shepherd, not a wolf. Feed them, devour them not. Hold up the weak, heal the sick, bind up the broken, bring again the outcasts, seek the lost. Be so merciful that you be not too remiss. So minister discipline that you forget not mercy, that when the chief shepherd shall appear, you may receive the never-fading crown of glory. The same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. By the authority committed unto us, and with the consent of those who have chosen thee to be the Bishop Coadjutor Pretoria in Southern Africa in the traditional Anglican Church, we do now place you in that office and do institute and invest you the right Reverend Stephen Smuts unto the same.
Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor a thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who showest to them that are in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness, grant unto all those who are admitted unto the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may avoid those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the eighth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the 14th verse. Now when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then laid their hands on them and received the Holy Ghost. Here endeth the epistle.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel is written in the 20th chapter of St. John, beginning at the 9th verse. As soon then, as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish ye have just caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, one hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was the net not broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him a third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thy girdest thyself, and walkest whither thy hoodest. But when thou shalt be old, Thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This he spake, signifying what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me card and do reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. The Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we give them up them. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and singing. and thanksgiving be unto the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who by his one oblation of himself once offered, made a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to, thy inst according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, do render unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same, and looking for his coming again in glory, 
with power and great glory, we offer unto thee thy divine majesty, that this holy bread of eternal life and this cup of everlasting salvation. And we humbly beseech thee to pour thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these thy gifts, that all who that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son and be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain the remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father, almighty, world without end. As our Savior Jesus Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, The peace of the Lord be with you all.
We do not presume. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sin of the world.
for star programs.
O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endureth forever. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost vouchsafe to, safe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Bernard, yeah. Bernard? I want to thank my... Mm -hmm. to the microphone. Yes. Can you talk into the microphone? Yes. Today is a great day to us. I wish if the people of Zambia are here, the people of Botswana, the people of Mozambique, and the people of Zimbabwe, if they were here greeting you face to face, that would be the basic thing. They were very happy. However, I drafted the letter they told me. Not what I hear, not what I hear from somebody, but them themselves. But we must pray hard. The people in Zimbabwe, the people in, in Zambia, they are working very hard and are very active. Very, very active. We must be very careful with those people. I saw them. I stayed with them. I've never seen a strong congregation like that. 
I want to thank my, my what is my, the, the bishop. Hmm? You are wonderful man, I tell you. The people in the that they love you, if somebody said that they don't love you, it is misleading you. They love you all. This is my word, right? I am saying my son, it belongs to me to read a letter from you. What has been that? Read carefully. Okay. <laughs> Talk like that. <laughs> Let me sit down. I greet you all in the name of the uh, Lord Jesus Christ as in Savior. You are not reading. I'm reading now. On behalf of the Congregation of Africa, I bring you warmest greetings in the grace and love of Jesus Christ. We thank the Primate Archbishop Shane for the good leadership in the whole world full of the Holy Spirit. Upon this election and this day, the consecration is, was Bishop of Stephen Smarts. We thank you for your continuous help in Africa. In the words of Apostle Paul, in the words of Apostle Paul, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, being confident of this very thing, that he which has that begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. To fellow consecrator Bishop Craig, we would like to thank you for being a wonderful friend for the congregation of Africa. Your spirit is in Africa. We rejoice in the gifts that you bring to the congregation of Africa, gifts of evangelistic preaching and teaching, theological reasoning and writing, and godly courage to banish all strange and erroneous doctrine from, the, from God's church. We look forward to all of the ways God will use you under the anointing of his spirit to proclaim Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of all peoples and to strengthen all leaders within the Anglican tradition, uh, traditional Anglican communion. May God continue to guide and help your work. We have received most beautiful vestments of our time from Mother Bishop Darlene. Mother Bishop, we thank you for making such beautiful and well-crafted vestments, being led by the Holy Spirit. You always work tirelessly to organize and execute the events of the Congregation of Africa. You make our celebrations possible by providing meals, hospitality, and much more at all our clergy gatherings. May the good Lord continue to bless you as we also thank you for looking after our Archbishop Michael. To Bishop Stephen Smarts, I extend to you my congratulations for your consecration. We thank God you are consecrated. You are consecrated to preach the gospel from Cape to Cairo. Assist Bishop Michael and learn from him as much as you can. The office to which you have been called is one with many responsibilities as a leader, visionary, an advocate for education and mission in the church, as well as the pastor to your clergy and faithful. I offer you my prayers as you commence this important role. This is a great day for you. I and the late Bishop Rhodes knew that you were going to become a bishop, and now God has fulfilled our prayers. Finally, the Congregation of Africa wants to thank our Archbishop for Africa, Bishop Michael Gill. He is the taproot for the traditional Anglican church in my home country, Zimbabwe, and the rest of Southern Africa. We pray for him to be a live bishop for Africa, as he is doing a tremendous job for the whole continent. I was born, raised, and worked in Africa, and I can confess that I have never seen such a strong and dedicated bishop for the people of Africa is you. Archbishop Michael, you are brilliant, compassionate, honest, loyal, dedicated, truthful, inspiring, loving, supportive, creative, and we could go on and on. 
We are so thankful for your life. Long live your excellence, Bishop Michael. Thank you. With our love and prayers and thanks as ever, Bishop Wellington Morinda. you guys like to sit down in those four chairs? Wow, it's wonderful indeed that Bishop Wellington was able to be with us. I'm really so thrilled. You can see, Bishop Wellington, you've gone through the most difficult time with the death of Benita. She was the best wife in Africa. You told me that. And uh, you miss her terribly. 60 years of marriage. And uh, Bishop's heart is broken, so we pray for you, we love you, we want you to know our support. God bless you. Yeah. I just want to thank you all for being here. You're such a mixed bunch. At one point, Bishop Craig said to me, what language are they singing in? I said, everything you can think of, they're singing in. It was beautiful. And uh, it's just wonderful that you're here. I have a warm greeting from Father Lungu, who is the Vicar General of Zambia. You heard Bishop Marinda speak about the church in Zambia. It is a very energetic church. It's a very poor church, but they make do with what they have, and they really are um, fantastically motivated for the gospel. So we are grateful to Father Lungu and his clergy for their good wishes. We were going to bring them down here, but there are questions about that mpox virus which is about cross-border travel and we agreed that it was more uh, prudent not to travel at this time. I also have you uh, a message to us from our traditional Anglican brothers in Brazil. Now Bishop Craig and I have worked very hard with these people. They're lovely. They've got two dioceses, one in Sao Paulo and one in Natal, of all places, but um, not KZN. They, um, they write us a wonderful greeting from their Bishop Am Ambrosia, Albertino. People of God, a portion of the traditional Anglican church that is in Brazil, precisely in the Diocese of Natal, joins with the Universal Church in the joys of Episcopal consecration of Stephen Smuts this Saturday, September 7, for the mission of a coadjutor bishop in the Diocese of Johannesburg. No, that's not right, but it's what he said, Pretoria and Southern Africa. The presence of our dear primate, the symbol of unity in the traditional Anglican Church as principal consecrator, Bishop Craig Bottrell of Canada, Bishop Michael Gill and Bishop Wellington Marinda are an expression of the shepherding in Christ Jesus our Lord, our shepherd par excellence. We pray for the new bishop with good wishes for a fruitful ministry in the hope of the growth of the kingdom of God. The Anglican Diocese of Natal Dom Albertino de Souza Barrios, Bishop uh, Father Melk Ambrosio de Silva, the Diocesan Secretary of the Diocese of Natal. Isn't that a lovely message? We thank God for them. <coughs> I want to, I would like to thank the consecrating bishops who've come out. It's the first time you've met Archbishop Shane and we hope that one day he'll be motivated by your singing to come again but uh, it's a great, great privilege to have us. He's the primate of our worldwide church. He and I have worked very closely as I've been the secretary of the college, so we've seen most of what's gone on with the growth of the church throughout the world. He is such a stable and logical and deep thinking and spiritual man. We are very blessed that he is our primate and we are very blessed to have him here today. Thank you, Bishop Craig. And uh, what can I say about Bishop Craig? He's our friend in the stasis. He's come.
to the consecration of Bishop Wellington. Now he's here for the consecration of Bishop Stephen. He is a friend of our church and we are grateful for that friendship. Bishop Craig, it's just wonderful having you here again. Thank you. You bring such a, a wonderful air into the room. Thank you so much for that. What, what can I say? Dynamite in small packages, but it's still, <laughs> even though he's a bit uh, wobbly at the moment, he's absolutely fantastic. Thank you for making the journey, Bishop Wellington. We're deeply grateful. Not in good shape right now, as you can see, but he's going to bounce back, I'm sure. And we look forward to seeing him in ministry again. Thank you for being with us, Bishop Wellington. <laughs> Won't you stand, uh, Bishop Stephen? It's time to meet the fam. We want to meet the fam, right? Come, Bishop Stephen. Come, 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 come. Come, fam. So this is the dad. <laughs> and the one who's taller than him, even with his hat on, is Kyle. And this is their daughter, Michelle. And this is Mel, who's his boss. So, <laughs> so we welcome this Episcopal family into our midst. We are grateful to God for them being here today. And thank you for your time. Bishop Stephen, thank you for your deep love of God and for carrying your family along in that journey with you. God bless you all. Amen. I've got lots of other people to thank, so I'd like to start off with those who helped to transport everything that has made this service possible, all the food, all the other stuff, but also those of you who helped transport the cooks and the stoves and everything that's come to this church, I want to say a deep, deep thank you for your efforts on behalf of the church. Thank you very much for that. I'd like to, <laughs> like to also thank uh, Canon Mulemi, where is he? Ah, there he is. For organizing our servers. They had a rehearsal. It was very beautiful to have so many servers to here today. Thank you, Father Mulemi. And you saw the two deacons in their wonderful Dalmatics. That's Deacon Dalmain and Deacon Brian. They came up from Cape Town. They are in the parish of Father Stephen. Welcome to you on behalf of your parish. <laughs> Father Mbafeni Pasha and Father Godfrey Matibi need a special word of thanks. They've arranged accommodation for many people. They've been coordinating, picking up people from stations and bus stops and all over the place. Father Mbafeni needs a holiday, we understand, uh, but they've worked beautifully together. Thank you very much, Fathers, for doing that. <laughs> Father, uh, Brother Ronnie Gilfillan, yes, stand up, please, Brother, is interesting person in that uh, he's done an incredible amount of work in the preparing for and the running of the service, but he's also, uh, in, for the first time in his life, present with his boss, and that is in the oratory of the servants of God, and you are the Father General of the OSG, and Brother Ronnie is a brother in that order. It's wonderful to see them together and a chance to uh, maybe expand the work of that wonderful order of men who give up their entire lives in God's service. Thank you very much, Brother Ronnie. <clears throat> Ivan Marietta. <clears throat> Ivan Marietta give of their time and their wonderful expertise in giving us the sound and the lights and everything uh, that they do for us here. It's the second time they've done this. I tell Marietta we're very grateful. Thank you. Right. Uh, we've got to thank Khaleesi Bambo and Ron Gill also for um, their wonderful input in the music. We want to thank you for that very, very much. And um, just, just a note, just like 
Father Marinda's heart is heavy, so is Kulisi Bambo, his wife, a member of uh, MU in, in Sechejo, died just a short while ago, and uh, we give you our warmest love and affection. My brother Ronnie nearly did the trick himself, nearly died. He went on a motorbike uh, tour and ended up in hospital. I'm not telling them why, but uh, it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't bad driving. But uh, he survived it, and thank you for the music, Ronnie. Okay. There's a wonderful group of women who came here last night, beginning with um, Ma Nene. Deacon Nene, thank you very much for lending us your wife. She's a high energy number. I think that you must have a lot of trouble at home. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, we have a wonderful group of women from Mamelodi, from Kharankua, from Matibistat, from Atridgeville, who've been cooking all night for you. It's wonderful. We say thank you to them. May God bless them. And then I have to, I'm afraid she would hate me for this, but I'm going to do it anyway. She's, um, she was really unwell yesterday, Madeline, and I see she's slipped out, so she's probably not feeling too good. But aren't the vestments beautiful today? And... And last time, and last time, and last time, she says she's retired. I doubt it, but let's see if we can. We all need new stoles, don't we, huh? Yeah. So, but thank you. She's been such an amazing uh, support for me as well. I'm just deeply grateful to have her in my life. Some of the pain that we've had in the past has been wiped out now by this wonderful occasion. And... We have had the opportunity now to shift people around a little within the diocese and to make some appointments which really show us and show you the vision of the church in terms of how we want to go forward. We don't want to be run by a group of old people like Ray Marinda and myself. We're, we're a thing of the past. We have to keep handing the work of the gospel on to those who are highly energized and able and we have to recognize them for that. And so I want to just say that we want to thank our relatively young and energetic Bishop Coadjuta, Father Stephen, or Bishop Stephen now, for being prepared to uh, make that statement of faith and to work on leadership within the, the church. A bishop co adjuta is a funny name, isn't it? But it's not a suffragan. A suffragan bishop, if I die, has to resign, retire. A bishop co adjuta is going to keep a smooth and steady leadership through. And that's what we want. We don't want to have ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. We want a smooth and steady upward trajectory. So bless you in your work and ministry, Bishop Stephen. I'm going to have to get used to saying that. But I also want to say that it made space for a new vicar general because he was our vicar general and so we were very pleased after prayer and consideration to appoint to the role of vicar general of the diocese the very Reverend Godfrey Mokanyani Matibi. He is a wonderful gift to the church. certificate from Archbishop Shane. Archbishop Shane, would you hand him his certificate? There you go. We also have, we had three canons in the church recently. We had Canon Lionel Caper, who's still alive, 94 years old now. But we also had Canon Willie Myers and Canon Martin Macholin. Both of those men succumbed to COVID-19. That was a very sad thing, part of the incredible loss that we suffered. So after prayerful consideration, we are filling up those rows of canons and so we're going to have a, 
a real arsenal of them in due course. And beginning we, with Canon Isaiah Masiane Molemi. We With the departure of Father Venna, who you know, um, who resigned from his office as a priest, it became necessary to relook at the Eastern Cape, and we appointed as regional dean for the entire Eastern Cape <coughs> the Reverend Canon Mziwonki Liston Mandla. Yeah. <laughs> So that makes three canons that we've got. Now we're going to get a fourth one. And that is going to be the Reverend Canon Angelo Randall Erickson, Regional Dean of Northern Cape, and also Canon in the Church. Uh, Father Godfrey Matibi moving into uh, Vicar General uh, rank and, and he becomes the senior priest in our whole diocese. By the way, that's a very wonderful uh, to have a young and energetic um, Vicar General. We needed a replacement for the region of Gauteng and Limpopo and it's a great pleasure to make the announcement to you and to Bishop Shane Archbishop Shane of Father Umbofeni Pasha. Who has, who has done more work in the last week than most of us. So I hope you can notice that almost all of those people could make the stairs unassisted. So it's, it's a good sign. It's a sign of, of a youthful, healthy, growing church that's got leadership into the future long term. In fact, if we look at the age group of them, we've suddenly brought the age of the leadership down by an, a mighty amount. And that's so good for a church because we're not looking like we're about to fall off the edge and disappear. We're in, in a state of growth. We're in a state of development. We are a church on the move. That's what we are. We are the traditional Anglican church in a decaying and dying society. We bring a message of hope, of salvation, of order, and of sound values. And we can give thanks to God for that. So our prayers go to you all. And may God bless us and be with us and bless our ministry together. Thank you very much, Archbishop Shane. You can't let him have the uh, last word. All right. I won't keep you. I know we're, we're all a little hot, etc. But I wanted to extend to you, the faithful, uh, all the prayers and blessings for the traditional Anglican Church. One of the privileges that I have as primate is to travel around the traditional Anglican Church and see the many parishes, the faithful, the priests, the bishops, who keep the life and work of the Church alive and the message of the gospel of salvation in Christ. 
I only wish that some of us in North America could see your faith, your strength, your vigor, the life you bring to the church, and the hope and future. Because we in North America are struggling tremendously in a counterculture. But I know how much you do. And therefore, I take with me back home all that I've experienced here and the privilege of being with you. And then I can represent you as best I can as I speak to the college and to the others whom I meet as I travel about. My next journey is to the Caribbean to meet with the bishops and the executive committee, and I will certainly bring that to them, the vigor and strength, because you certainly give it to me. God bless you all, and I ask your prayers for Bishop Craig and myself as we return to Canada on Tuesday. Thank you. So we're going to go into a recessional hymn now. Uh, the Episcopal Blessing, actually. After the Episcopal Blessing, we'll go into the recessional hymn. Servers will go out as we came in. First the, the clergy, then the regional deans, then the bishops with um, Bishop Stephen carrying his crozier, which is interesting because now he's been given a new role and a new authority in the church. And then I'd like... Um, for the bishops to please come back here. So I'd like you to stay here, please, Bishop Wellington. And if we can have a, a couple of photographs of the bishops with the regional deans, of the bishops with the, all the clergy, please. And of anyone else then, I think, if we could get a full house photograph, it would be absolutely amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be absolutely amazing. Let's see if, if uh, Ivor's got a wide-angle lens for that. But so please don't dash off. And the moment we've finished with the photographs, lunch will be served. The blessing. Please stand for the blessing. Just stay standing. Stay where you are. Forgot to mention my wonderful chaplain today, who has been taking care of me, and uh, and I especially thank him for that and for his ministry. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Fight the good fight of faith, that we you may finish your course with joy. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. <laughs>